Donald Trump clearly has not slowed down in his battle with the GOP. He has even said he does not care about House Speaker Paul Ryan's support. Doesn't Trump need to keep the Republican Party united behind him, or at least get them behind him? Joining me now to give his thoughts on this wild 2016 election is former John Boehner, former Speaker of the House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, nice to see you, sir. Good to be with you. Uh, how would you like to be in your old job right now? No, thanks. <laughs> it's a hard job. But why? Well, uh, Paul Ryan's in a very difficult spot. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's the leader of the majority party. And if the Republicans aren't the majority of the party anymore, then he's not the speaker. And so Paul uh, is looking out for his, uh, for his members, uh, trying to help them do whatever they need to do to get elected in this crazy political season that we're in. Now, he's not withdrawn his endorsement of, of Donald Trump, um, but he did you know, react pretty strongly when, the, when that, that uh, vulgar videotape hit last week. When you saw that and saw what was in it, what was your reaction as to how this would play with the public at large? Well, I, I was disgusted by it. I thought most uh, Americans would be disgusted by it. And frankly, I'm a little surprised that uh, more people uh, aren't disgusted by it. So your view was this was dynamite? I thought it was dynamite. I thought it was real bad. Uh, and, you know, you can't defend it. And frankly, Donald Trump isn't even trying to uh, defend it. Listen, uh, in my view, it, the, the election is pretty simple. The, the legislative process, the political process in Washington is at a standstill and will be regardless of who wins. And the only thing that really matters uh, over the next four years or eight years is who's going to appoint uh, the next Supreme Court nominees. Uh, I just believe that uh, the next president is going to appoint two, three, maybe four justices to the Supreme Court and all throughout the federal court system. Uh, because more and more issues, because they can't be dealt with legislatively, are going to end up in the, in the court system. And so uh, I believe that uh, Donald Trump's view of who these judges uh, should be is much closer to where I am uh, than the judges that Hillary Clinton would appoint. So you plan to vote for Trump? I'm going to vote for him. And his seeming lack of knowledge about so much of what the president is involved of things, doesn't bother you? There's a lot of things that I disagree with, uh, with Donald on. Uh, but as I said... The most important thing about this election is who are these judges are going to be appointed. I mean, I have to understand, you know, Supreme Court justices today are going to serve 20, 30, 40 years. The biggest impact any president will have uh, on American society and on American economy is who's on that court. Now, um, as you look out across the, the land, knowing the districts as you do from having campaigned with so many of the Republican members and others, um, what is your sense about the, the chances of holding on to the House? I think uh, we'll hold on, hold on to the House. We've got about a 30 seat majority uh, in the House. Uh, but there are, you know, about 10 members who sit in seats that were won by Barack Obama. Uh, those were always going to be tough seats to hold on to. They're probably still going to be tough seats to hold on to. Uh, but given, uh, given this election cycle, uh, I think we're going to see more ticket splitting than we've ever seen uh, in an election, uh, where people typically would go in, vote for president, and may not even vote uh, in the congressional race. I know in my last election, uh, and almost all my elections, in a presidential year, uh, about 10 percent of the people who voted for president didn't even bother to, to vote down the ballot. Uh, but this time it might be a little different. They may you, not... say, you say that because people are conscious of this? People are very conscious that, uh, that all right, we've got these two candidates, they may like one or the other, or not like either one of them, where most Americans are. Uh, but realize that uh, voting for uh, this in the Senate race and the congressional race are really important. Now, what happens if, in your judgment, if more of this sort of crude stuff comes out, as a lot of people think it will, um, before Election Day? Does that change your calculus at all? Listen, we've got 27 days. Anybody thinks that we've seen everything we're going to see, I think they're kidding themselves. On both sides. I don't know what WikiLeaks or anybody else is going to throw out from the other. Uh, against Mrs. Clinton or what may come out against uh, Mrs. Mr. Trump. But what more could be said in this election cycle than has already been said? So you seem to think that, that we kind of already know what Donald Trump is all about and that nothing further could come out that would make any difference? Well, it can't be a worse, could it? <laughs> well, that's a good question. What do you think? I don't think so. But again, I'll just go back to the point I've made. Uh, the legislative process is, is, is it's not going to function very well. 
Even if he's elected and a Republican, he's elected, well, and the Republicans control both houses. Both of these candidates for president have painted themselves into a pretty far corner, and uh, and and their ability to move uh, beyond the people who uh, elected them uh, to work toward the middle to get things done, I think is going to be uh, severely tested, and so you're going to see. Uh, more and more issues in our society end up in the court system and eventually end up in the Supreme Court. And that's where the real action is going to be. Mr. Speaker, good to see you, sir. Nice Thank to see you. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you.